had to get off the Xanax, I had to get off the Percocet, I had to get off the codeine, I had to quit the Promethazine, I had to get out the projects, I had to put down the Molly X, I had to get up and get a check, I had to earn me some respect, I had to get off the Xanax, I had to get off the Percocet. That feminism shit went the wrong way, didn't it? We either are at war or we're not at war. We're either going to work together or we're not going to work together. Nobody deserves death. But we've gotten it. Multiple times we've gotten it. We've been killed in the street like dogs. Nothing's happened. When are we going to start acting like this isn't a game? This is not no shit to play with. She was able to pull away from this motherfucker three, four times. Had it been a nigga in the right... He would have got one chance to pull away and he would have been murdered. Had it been a nigga in the wrong who actually had... I'm talking about, when I say a nigga in the right, I mean a nigga who... This police officer ran down on him for no reason and he didn't have a warrant. A law-abiding citizen. He would have got one chance to, to snatch away and he would have been murdered. But a nigga in the wrong would have been murdered on sight. Get your shit together, be home. Tell that bitch bone up a teeth. Right, right, right after that, put that hoe on the leak. Buy her over that hoe up the street. Right up the block, bitch, you know I'm a beast. The fuck you think my name Guapo? Cause a nigga stacking out his Guapo. Get a sweet up at the Marriott and fuck a pair of divas all up on the top floor. Bad, bad, bad bitches, niggas want the main, ain't a thing. Treat them like some thighs, bro. Stephen Curry, when I grip the 30 net and everything, when the gun. Welcome back to the Big Face Podcast. I'm Ayo Conseco, fearless leader of Ayo Nation and the Men Too Movement. And this is... If you have not gotten your uh, Men Too t-shirt or your Big Face Podcast t-shirt or your Are You Serious t-shirt, go to paypal.me forward slash Are You Serious 10. That's for all the new people who are coming in the DM asking me how do you join the Men Too Movement and how do I get a shirt and shit like that. Bam, boom, there it is. Of course, we have a motherfucking fly in this bitch, so I'm not going to be able to focus. God damn. Um, also, it, it, if you noticed, um, I have all the numbers. Um, I have the numbers to the Patreon. I have the numbers to the GoFundMe. I have the numbers to the um, the men to change.org petition. Um, giving everybody a chance to feel... What I feel every day. You look at these fucking numbers. Uh, they're discouraging. But I want everybody to get in the fucking game. As you see those numbers. You will be seeing those numbers. Until we hit our goal of 10,000. And a um, respectable amount of um, currency. And to go fund me. Um, and I believe everyone here should be joining a Patreon. Um, I've joined a Patreon. Because people get a man. Just uh, let people do um, a monthly Let people do a monthly, um, what is it, a monthly pledge so that they don't have to worry about it and shit like that. So that's what we did. Um, the Patreon is now up. Show love, show love. All right, let's get down to what's going on. Uh, Pamela Turner was killed uh, by the police officer. Um, are we surprised about it? Um... Yesterday, I was leaving the office and shit like that. I had to go handle that business. Um, you should go to the um, Instagram and follow me there if you want to know, like, all the shit that goes on behind the scenes and shit like that. If all you're doing is uh, watching a YouTube channel, you're missing a whole bunch of shit. Um, the only shit that make it to the YouTube is, like, the, you know what I'm saying, big shit. But the small shit that really make this shit go is on the Instagram and the Facebook and shit like that. So, you know... Where to go to follow that shit. But I was leaving the office. Y'all will hear about that shit. That move I made yesterday. Y'all will hear about that shit. Probably next week or something like that. Um, just thinking ahead. 
Inbox is flooded. Inbox is flooded. Ah oh, man, they killing this man. Look at this shit, man. Look at this shit. Look how he doing this, man. Also, hey, if it's big news and it's all over the timelines, please don't send that shit to me in a DM. Obviously, I saw it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I only want people that don't only send me shit that everybody doesn't know about them. Everybody knows about it. There's no reason to send that shit to my inbox. There's no reason for you to send this shit to my inbox. Obviously, it's news and everybody knows about it. Don't do that shit. Like, this... That's the easiest way to do it. Don't send me shit that everybody knows about. NBA Youngboy uh, uh, in a shooting. Kodak Black get arrested. Pamela Turner gets killed. Dog, this is fucking national news. I don't live under a rock. Like, I have how many fucking devices in this motherfucker? I know what the fuck is going on. Don't flood the, the inboxes for business and for real shit. Uh, shout out to that boy Teflon Mark. Teflon Mark reached out to me after I made that um, episode about him on uh, the rap trap, whatever like that. I'm open to talking to anybody I talk about. I'm open to talking like to them to see what their mindset is. So shout out to him. That interview should be coming soon. But I leave out the office and you watch the video. And the first thing you notice about this video is the lack of assistance. The lack of assistance kind of stands out to you on some shit like the nigga hit a, the police officer hit her with the taser and the nigga in the background he he's standing out at a real close like a, a safe distance pop the ass there is no ah why you no nah, none of that and that's the first thing that let me know whatever was going on. The community was cool with it going on. The only time that you hear. The, the rah rah shit is when oh man, you didn't went too far. But is it really too far, or are we at war? But that, that's some that's some different. That's some different. That's, right now, I'm talking about the way that we react on the scene compared to after. You know what I'm saying? The shit happened, and that go back to Derek Grace's point. Derek Grace made a point uh, yesterday saying that. We as influencers, as the media, black media, um, perpetuate this black destruction mentality by, dog, I'm telling you, no less than a hundred fucking times was this shit sent to me, man. This shit, when you, and, and you look at it, it like a, a black fight. Uh, anything that, that has to do with the downfall of black people, that shit circulates like fucking water. You know what I'm saying? Fast as fuck. And that's that's twerking, that's uh, niggas caught selling dope, uh, police raid, NBA young boy, Kodak black, niggas fighting the street, niggas shoot a nigga, police shoot a nigga, police beat a woman, white man beat a woman, whatever the fuck. If it has to do with us being fucked up, it goes like water. But then when you have, like Derek Grace was saying, when you have something like, this is what I took from his, what he said. When you have some shit like black excellence, like, for example, he gave um, him with his children um, um, taking apart, breaking down, and reassembling weapons. Blindfolded. That's what he has his children doing. That shit, you know what I'm saying? It's hard as fuck to pass that shit around. We see it, but it doesn't pass like this shit, whatever. And at first when I heard it's like, well, what the fuck would you rather people do? Like, act like this shit isn't happening? But then you think about it, it's like, this is war. Y'all may not believe that this shit is war, but I believe this shit is war. Since the first, um, let's say, Trayvon Martin, then Mike Brown, Walter Scott, uh, the... Castillo, that was, that was one that really fucked me up. And you can name so many after that. Like, at, pick any one of them. But once you pick that one, that's where the war started. And there's been no end. Continuously, continuously, continuously. So we're at war. Do we believe that shit or not? But I'll get to that in a minute. You don't have to continue. We know what the fuck, but it, you continue this, and we just we we're getting more and more desensitized to the point where a nigga can record this shit and give a 
and narrated without any emotion. A black woman that has to resemble your mother is being brutalized in front of you. Um, what, what else that shows is that he knows who this woman is. Knowing that she's um, being unruly and shit like that. And I... And that's why I really hate. I'm not gonna do that shit though. Uh, that you know, uh, what, what happened before the camera came on? We saw what the fuck happened when the camera was on. Um, nigga knew who the fuck the nigga who shot this shit know who the fuck this motherfucker is. Know what the fuck she do. And this is not no rare occurrence. If it was a little five year old girl, motherfucker may have had a different attitude, or maybe that that's just his fucking personality. But with that kind of response in the apartments at nighttime, we know what the fuck this is. We know what the fuck this is, and we know who the fuck she is. That's I'm, but I'm not even on that shit. What I'm on is the fact that we continue to see this shit being more and more desensitized to it, but not like Derek Gray said, we're just fucking reactive. See it? Ah, go on to the next one. And nothing fucking happens. And this is why I don't cover this racist type shit as far as in the world with this war that we have going on between civilians, black civilians, and the police. Because it's a fucking war. We know it's a war. We should know it's a fucking war. I, my mission is trying to get justice in a whole nother segment of... And that justice is really... I know... How slim of a chance I have to get justice within this Me Too era and shit like that. But if I can't get the laws changed, then what I would want to change is the mentality of our young black men so that they don't have to go through what so many are going through. I got motherfuckers in jail having a girl and shit like that to hit me up on Instagram like, hey, uh, he want, uh, he's locked up, he, uh, his baby mama, whatever, ah, oh, the fuck, you know what I'm saying, he wants to get in touch with you, do an interview, and it's just, and it's, and it's so many, so, it never stops, it never stops, hey man, my story fucked up, getting whole books in a fucking DM, hey man, I just want to, I need to get my story out there, this is my motherfucking, you know what I'm saying, And it's heavy. It's heavy. And it comes from me being conscious of what the fuck is going on. I think that if we all got on that same fucking mindset of these motherfuckers are trying to kill you. If you think that fucking way, you wouldn't play like this. And and also, being that we wouldn't play, we'll be all be on one fucking mindset. You see the fucking police, what we gonna do? Are we gonna make these motherfuckers feel uncomfortable coming into our neighborhoods? I'm, I, but I'm, that's what I'm saying. It, it's too easy for me to say I just uh, be an armchair revolutionary and tell everybody what they should do. Me myself, I would rather just run with my group and say, "Hey, with my group, you get if you interact with a police officer, I would first tell you before anything, anything, de-escalate the fucking situation off the fucking rip." Once again, on my fucking Instagram. Y'all saw me back there working out and shit like that, and the fucking police run down on me. And the only reason I knew he was behind me, because I had on headphones, or because I could balk at him. I could balk at him, this motherfucker then parked sideways behind me. I'm behind a fucking, I'm, I'm at the AA meeting place, whatever like that, but it's after I was like 9 o'clock. And um, this motherfucker then parked sideways behind me. I don't know if his body cam is on or not, but I know that I'm in all, I'm in navy blue with my hood on, because I'm, you know what I'm saying, I'm working out, got trash bags up under this motherfucker, navy blue fucking sweatpants that are insulated in black fucking shoes, you know what I'm saying, like, and I'm a fucking felon, whatever happens back here, it's gonna be his fucking story against a dead felon, I'm not relying on the his fucking body cam to give me justice, I'm dead already, so what I'm going to do first, is there a problem officer? No problem. What do you need? Keep my hands, just make this motherfucker feel comfortable because 
I'm not depending on, oh, uh, we gonna march, oh, uh, no, nah, nah, man, hey, yo, without you were coming up, man, I'm not, more than anything, I know what that would do to my loved ones, my mother, my grandmother, my fucking family. I understand what I mean to them. You look at this nip to hustle shit, and, and, and it's like, uh, he didn't have a wheel in place. Uh, uh, now, who, who should get the money? Lauren London, the fucking, uh, his brother Black Sam, and, and all this other shit going on. But as much as, oh man, motherfuckers from the computer are saying, fight the power and all this other shit like this, ain't nobody, ain't nobody, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing happening. Every time this shit happens, oh, that's fucked up, motherfucker want to uh, fucking yada, 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 but ain't no motherfucking walking. And I'm saying that, dog, since ain't going to be, since we know ain't going to be no retaliation on the, on the black side, no, we gonna handle this shit. I right, de-escalate the situation. If motherfucker handle that shit wrong, we going to the goddamn office. But we not going to the fucking mall. I wouldn't advise any of my motherfucking loved ones to react the way she did. Period. Point blank. Because there's a fucking war going on, and you cannot give these motherfuckers in a goddamn excuse. Ain't no, I, no bowing down. Oh yes, sir, master. But I'm telling you, dog, with my fucking little sisters. I'm telling them, you get pulled over, hands on the fucking wheel, sir, I'm reaching for my license, maintain eye contact, you know what I'm saying, comply, they, they know they're at war, they, they with that comply or die shit, I'm telling my loved ones, fucking comply. They have the goddamn upper hand until we change that shit. And we're not going to change that shit from outside, especially especially how fucking disorganized we are. So you decide, uh, I would have, I would have, all that I would have shit. And then you let your fucking child go out there and do that shit. And then you, you know what I'm saying, you handle that shit. But my loved ones, I see what the fuck is going on. And I know what the, he's on paid leave. Hey, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? So... That's that's where the fuck I'm at with it, man. Um, I would say, if if as much as I'm not with no disrespect to the conscious community, as much as I'm not one of them or whatever like that, if they came up with a plan for us to re a way for us to retaliate nonviolently, because the reason why I wouldn't tell nobody to go kill a police officer because I wouldn't do that shit. And I'm not going to go break down the times that I would do that shit. No, I wouldn't do the shit. So nobody around me that may see me as a fucking, you know what I'm saying, anything to them. Ah, uh, yeah, he, no, no. The way I want to handle it is a way that all, because everybody's not used to fucking violence. So what can we do to retaliate? Let's do a real fucking boycott. PNC Bank. Uh, funds the fucking police officers. Let's say, all right, if you bank any black person that banks with P banks with PNC, go get your money out right now. Or fuck that shit. Let's go ahead and take our money out of all the fucking banks and crash this shit. Let's go on ride. But we, you just can't get everybody on one accord. And when I say everybody, it's like dog. This shit ain't just happening in Texas. This shit is happening all over the nation. Black people. And let me get to that shit. Not just black men no more. Black people are being brutalized and murdered. So if they see us as one fucking team, why can't we see ourselves as one fucking team? Black folks, this shit gotta stop. Take your money out the fucking banks. We're gonna take that money. Everybody take a percentage out that money and put it on this right here. And we're gonna start our own black fucking bank. Something. Something tangible that everybody can do so that nobody can say, oh, I ain't with that shit. Because that's what you, when you ask motherfuckers to riot and, and all this march, and marching don't, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, but as much as I tell you, I, I'm i going to D.C. and I'm, I'm marching, that's a, I, that's a whole different thing. I'm talking about fucking men's rights, false rape allegations. I just want to, I'm trying to draw attention. That's all a fucking march does. Not, a march doesn't get justice. 
And I know that. I, I know, when I'm going to D.C., I'm not trying to fucking get justice. I'm trying to draw attention. Shouldn't have said that out loud. But I'm, I'm, I got to break this shit down to you. That's what it does. And it's, ah, uh, look at this shit. What the fuck? So fuck the march. Fuck the ride. Let's do something real. Take the money out. We not going to shop at Walmart no more because they cater to police officers. We not going to eat at Waffle House no more because, like, when, when the girl got fucking, um, uh, beat up at fucking, uh, uh, uh Waffle House in, uh, Sierra Land. That would have been a good time to say, but we couldn't do that shit. I don't know what you talking about. I, I'm going to get my all-star breakfast. She, she shouldn't have been resisting no way. And it's not even about whether or not uh, she's right. Or, it's like, let's fucking unite and do something together. Let's unite for once. Let's unite all of us. No black person is going to walk into this place. We do it once. We can do it again. But And that's that's what I would say. But see, I'm not in that position. My position is, hey, if you, right now, until we make some type of change in this rape sector of the law, we three S's. We're three S's until some change. And anybody that goes outside of the three S's, that's on you. So I know who's with me. By who's, you know what I'm saying? Because there's no way for you to fail in that. Until we get this shit fixed, we're going to be to ourselves. We're going to work over here and, and plan on going to get some shit fixed. But until we get something changed, until something comes to pass, we good. And those people that stay on this side are my people. You're not just going to be my people because you look like me. No, you have to do something in order to be my people. And not just say something. I'm with you, Ayo. No, 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 no. Are you following the three S's? Oh, man, I got two of them, man. But... Hey, do your thing, man. Try to get all three of them. But the niggas who really follow this, we're not playing because we understand there's a war going on. But another thing about this situation is um, I'm hoping that the good that can, can come out of this shit is Maybe this will show our women that you're not seen differently than we are. This is a prime example of, um, cause they said she had two children. Now, if you, if you call the police, um, or put someone on child support where a, a another person can be gaffled because this officer said he knew this lady and knew that she had a warrant and that's why he went to arrest her now how hard would it be for a man to be in an apartment complex where a police officer lives and that's why i think he's going on with this situation this police officer lived there and you know the police officers live in apartment complexes for free because you know what I'm saying they secure the premises whatever the fuck all right so it can be the same situation but a man lived there motherfucker know the man and now he got a child support warrant. Up, oh, that's reason to cap gaffing him to fuck up. If we know that anytime we come in physical contact with the police, someone dies. How in the fuck are you with us when you are putting me in? You're going to the fucking same people who just killed you. How does that work? Are they an enemy or are they not an enemy? It, it, like, there's no way, like, what the fuck you, you don't have to go to them. You don't have to go to them. And the reason why they feel like they can do this shit is because these motherfuckers feed you. They feed you. We can do what the fuck we want. They need us. These are the same motherfuckers you call when you find out your nigga cheat and you want to hit him with a fake fucking domestic violence while he's sleeping. And the reason why I can come off the head with this shit is because I got fucking me and two fucking podcasts backed the fuck up. They backed up. It's too many of them. Man, it's my... You know what I'm saying? So what I'm hearing 
And then what I'm seeing is like, hold on, man. You go back in a motherfucker uh, a lifetime and see the fucking reports they've made. Everything that they're getting from the government, which is the same motherfuckers who paid the motherfucker who just killed you. Are these motherfuckers the enemy or are they not? Post of the other day. Motherfucking post. Bitch said, if a nigga expose me, I'm going um, to give him some pussy and put him in prison for rape. This is funny until you hear stories like Lawrence McKinney. Or the man who went to jail, went, went to prison for 28 years uh, because the woman dreamed that he raped her. It's all funny until you actually locked up for this shit. And on that field... On that playing field, it, it's all fun and games. One side can play about it while the other side cries. But in this fucking game, when we talk about police brutality, we all in the same fucking boat. We just saw with the bartender in Texas uh, beat up the black woman like she was a fucking man. And that comes from, that comes from, you get to walk around all day long with this fucking pass. You walk around all day long with a pass. Oh, I'm a woman. You can't do shit to me. You just, I, I, what I wanted to do with this video was put these two videos side by side. You have the video of the woman in her doorway giving the police the business, telling them how it is as they trying to come in. And then you got the little kid in the background trying to talk. She like, shut the fuck up, which you shouldn't have that type of dysfunction in a household. Motherfucking kids shouldn't be talking while a grown up is talking. No way. But that's something different. But you got her whooping at the police. And then you got her right here. Trying to do the same thing. But it didn't end the same. I think that's a fucking trap. I think they allow you to get away with all this shit. So now you feel like you, you had a false sense of security. Oh, they can't do shit to me because I done did this shit to three police officers. And then you find that one police officer... That will be well within his rights, but you know that he can go anywhere within and outside of his rights and his power to destroy you. But because you, ah, no, ah you can't do this because I'm a woman. That feminism shit went the wrong way, didn't it? We either are at war. Are we not at war? We're either going to work together or we're not going to work together. Nobody deserves death. But we've gotten it. Multiple times we've gotten it. We've been killed in the street like dogs. Nothing's happened. When are we going to start acting like this isn't a game? This is not no shit to play with. She was able to pull away from this motherfucker three, four times. Had it been a nigga in the right, he would have got one chance to pull away and he would have been murdered. Had it been a nigga in the wrong who actually had, I'm talking about, when I say a nigga in the right, I mean a nigga who, this police officer ran down on him for no reason and he didn't have a warrant. A law-abiding citizen. He would have got one chance to, to snatch away and he would have been murdered. But a nigga in the wrong would have been murdered on sight. A nigga having a warrant is enough for a nigga to be killed nowadays. And we understand that. A nigga reaching for his ID nowadays is enough for him to be fucking murdered. We know that. So what I'm asking you is... Are we going to start acting like calling the police on a nigga is murdering a nigga? Or we're going to keep on playing like, oh, this nigga cheated on me. I'm going to call. Because that, that's all we can do from this shit. All we can do from this shit is actually unite. There's no bringing nobody back. And, and I know. But what we can do is learn from this shit and fucking form the fuck up. And if you're not going to do that shit, please miss me with these fucking situations. This is war. I understand that casualties come with war. I, and, and honestly, I don't believe in a war that doesn't have casualties.
we're either together or we're not. It, it like, uh, oh yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, cause I, it, it truly bothers me. See, when we had a situation, it truly bothers me because. What the fuck was that? It truly bothers me because it's like, oh, that police officer were wrong, and, and you all, you all with that shit. He ain't had to kill him. He ain't had to kill her and all that shit like this. But you know, like this, you seen a video just like one thing about these videos flowing like water. You see the same thing we see. So you know what happens when you call the fucking police and you still fucking call the police on him because you was mad that he cheated. You didn't hit this nigga. I want to do the video about fucking uh, uh, Herbo uh, baby mama already fucking slapping on fucking the boxer nigga. What we doing? Is it a game or it ain't a game? So I, and so if, if it's a game and everybody just playing, ain't miss me with this shit, dog. And and while I'm at it, I wanna I wanna add that uh, whilst uh, to to um to Derek Grace's point, um, whilst we're out here and they showing we got all the videos of us twerking and all that shit like that. And, and, and getting shot and getting killed in that black death shit. And we not passing the videos of us reassembling weapons and graduating college and teaching each, each other how to build motherboards and hack into phones and shit like that. You go on the other side of it and you see white people of all ages. Boy and... Hey, man! All ages and everything. Shooting fucking all type of weapons. Throwing grenades. Of fully automatic weapons, on like side by side. I've seen a, a compilation where you got the white people, old, young, boy, girl, shooting fucking all kind of weapons and shit like that. And we over here throwing money on fucking strippers. The, the old man shooting in a prone position. Over here, you got the little two year old girl twerking. Nigga putting lean on the fucking weed. We're either at war or we aren't. If you just if you still living like we ain't at war and shit like that, when this type of shit happens, come on, dog. That will, that's what will happen to any motherfucker in any war who's going about their everyday life as if there's not a war going on. They wouldn't even call him an innocent fucking bystander. What the fuck is wrong with this nigga? Don't he know that it's a fucking war going on and you still going to the store, smoking weed, hitting a bag, popping pills, getting drunk every day? Get your shit together, be home. Big Face Podcast, I'm Al Canseco. Join the Patreon. Uh, make sure you uh, donate to the GoFundMe. Uh, we shooting for August. We need 10,000 signatures on the... Uh, Change.org, me and two petition. See you on a minute. Love.